Let's balance the redox reaction Cr207 2 minus plus Cr04 2 minus. This is the dichromate ion. This is the oxalate ion. When these react, we get this chromium 3 ion and carbon dioxide. So the first thing we need to do when we're balancing these redox reactions is write the oxidation numbers for each element. I've already done that. If you need help with that, there's a link at the end of this video and in the description. Once we've done that, we want to write the half reactions for the species of interest. Those are ones whose oxidation states have changed. So that'll look like this. We can see that the chromium, that changed, and then the carbon, that changed, but the oxygen didn't. So these are the half reactions. If we look at it, we went for the chromium from a plus six to a plus three on each chromium atom. Because of that, this number has been reduced. This would be the reduction reaction, reduction half reaction. And here the carbon went from plus three to plus four. So its number got larger. It's been oxidized. That means it's lost electrons. So reduction half reaction, oxidation half reaction. So now that we have the half reactions, we can balance each one of these half reactions. So we're going to first balance the atoms of interest. Here that's the chromium. We have two chromium, so we need to put a two here. Down here we have two carbons, so we need a two here to balance the carbons. Now we can balance the oxygen atoms. We're going to do that by adding water. After all, this is happening in water, so water molecules are available. Seven oxygens, that means we need to add seven water molecules. So now the oxygens are balanced. Down here we have four oxygens. Here we have two, but we need to multiply it by the coefficient. Two times two is four, so we don't need to add any water molecules down here. Next, we balance the hydrogen atoms. We're adding H+. Plus. So this is happening in acidic medium. That means there's some H plus ions available. So we need to add 14 of these hydrogen ions over here. So that'll balance out the hydrogens. Down here, there's no hydrogens. We're all good. Finally, we're going to balance the charge out by adding electrons. So up here, it's a little bit challenging. We have 14 plus and 2 minus. So that gives us a 12 plus over here. Here we have 2 times 3 plus, 6 plus. So I'm going from a 12 plus to a 6 plus. I need to add 6 electrons over here. So now if you add all of these charges up, they'll be the same on both sides. Down here I have the 2 minus, so let's add 2 electrons to balance the charge. So we've balanced the half reactions, and this is really kind of the harder part of doing this. If you think about it, we have right here, these are the reactants and these react to form these products here. And we're trying to balance both the atoms and the charge. Right now we have six electrons in the products and only two electrons in the reactants. So we've not balanced the charge yet. So here's how we do that. If we multiplied this entire side here by three, three times two electrons, that gives us six electrons, six electrons up here, that would balance the charge. So what we need to do is multiply everything here in the brackets by three. Then we'll have our reactants here and our products here. We'll simplify and be done with the redox reaction for Cr207 2 minus plus C204 2 minus. So this is what we end up with. And to be clear, we have this up here and then three times this. These are the reactants up here on the top. And then for the products down here, we have these and then three times these here. So that's where this all comes from. So now we can cross things that are the same on both sides. We can cross those out. Six electrons here, cross them out. Looks like we have 14 H plus. Actually, that's all we can cross out. So this is our redox reaction, our balanced redox reaction for the dichromate ion plus the oxalate ion. Let me clean this up real quick. And there you have it. This is Dr. B with the balanced redox reaction for Cr207 2 minus plus C204 2 minus. Thanks for watching.